Well, let me uh, let me zoom out for a second. Uh, let's get into your paper on the measure of intelligence. That uh, did you put out in two thousand nineteen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. November. Uh, November. Yeah. Remember two thousand nineteen? That was uh, that was a different time. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> It feels like a different, uh, different, different world. You could travel, you could, you know, actually go outside and see friends. Yeah. Let me ask the most absurd question. I think uh, there's some non-zero probability there'll be a textbook one day, like 200 years from now, on artificial intelligence, or it'll be called like just intelligence because humans will already be gone. And it'll be your picture with a quote. This is, you know, one of the early uh, biological systems would consider the nature of intelligence, and there'll be like a definition of how they thought about intelligence, which is one of the things you do in your paper on measuring intelligence is to ask like, well, what is intelligence and, and uh, how to test for intelligence and so on. So is there a spiffy quote about what is Intelligence. What is the definition of intelligence according to Francois Cholet? Yeah. So, do, do you think <laughs> the, the the super intelligent AIs of the future will want to remember us the way we remember humans from the past? And do you think they will be, you know, they won't be ashamed of having a biological origin? Uh, no, I I think it'll be a niche topic. It won't be that interesting, but it'll be it'll be like the people that study in certain contexts like historical civilization that no longer exists, the Aztecs and so on, that that's how it'll be seen. And it'll be studied in the, also the context on social media, there'll be hashtags about the atrocity committed to human beings um, when, when, the, when the robots finally got rid of them. Like it was a mistake, it'll be seen as a, as a giant mistake, but ultimately, in the name of progress, and it created a better world because humans were uh, over-consuming the resources and all, they were not very rational and were destructive in the end in terms of productivity and uh, putting more love in the world. And so within that context, there'll be a chapter about these biological systems. You seem to have a very detailed vision of that future. You should write a, a sci-fi novel about it. I, I'm, I'm working, I'm, uh, I'm working on, on a sci-fi novel currently, yes. <laughs> yeah, so self published. Yeah. The definition of intelligence. So, intelligence is the efficiency with which uh, you acquire new skills at tasks that you did not previously uh, know about, that you did not prepare for. Right. So, it is not intelligence is not skill itself. It's not what you know, it's not what you can do. It's how well and how efficiently you can learn new things. New things. Yes. The idea of newness there seems to be fundamentally important. Yes. So you would see intelligence uh, on display, for instance, uh, whenever you see uh, a human being or, you know, an AI creature adapt to a new environment that it, did, it has not seen before, that its creators did not anticipate. Uh, when you see adaptation, when you see improvisation, when you see generalization, that's intelligence. Uh, in reverse, if you have a system that when you put it in a slightly new environment, it cannot adapt, it cannot improvise, it cannot deviate from what it's, it's hard coded to do or um, what, uh, what it has uh, been trained to do, um, that is a system that is not intelligent. So there's actually a quote from uh, uh, Einstein that captures uh, uh, this idea, which is the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. I, I like that quote. I think it uh, captures at least part of this idea. You know, there might be something interesting about the difference between your definition and Einstein's. I mean, he's just being Einstein <laughs> and clever. But acquisition of um, new ability to deal with new things versus ability to just change. What's the difference between those two things? So just changing itself. Do you think there's something to that? Just being able to change. Yes, being able to adapt. So not not change, but certainly uh, a change of direction. Being able to adapt yourself to your environment. Whatever the environment that's, is. That's a big part of intelligence, yes. 
And intelligence is more precisely, you know, how efficiently you're able to adapt, how efficiently you're able to basically master your environment, how efficiently uh, you can acquire new skills. And I think there's a, there's a big distinction to be drawn between uh, intelligence, which is a process, and the output of that process, which is skill. Um, so for instance, if you have a, a very smart human programmer uh, that considers the game of chess and that writes down uh, a static program that can play chess, then the intelligence is the process of developing that program. But the program itself is just encoding um, the output artifact of that process. The wow. program itself is not intelligent. And the way you tell it's not intelligent is that if you put it in a different context, you ask it to play Go or something, it's not going to be able to perform well without human involvement because the source of intelligence, the entity that is capable of that process, is the human program. It's so we should... Programmer. Uh, um, be able to tell the difference between the process and its output. We should not confuse uh, the output and the process. It's the same as, you know, do not confuse uh, a road building company and one specific road, because one specific road takes you from point A to point B, but a road building company can take you from, can make a path from anywhere to anywhere else. Yeah, that's beautifully put, but it's also to play devil's advocate a, a little bit, you know, um, it's possible that there's something more fundamental than us humans. So you kind of said the programmer creates uh, the difference between the the choir of the skill and the skill itself. There could be something like you could argue the universe is more intelligent, like the, the deep, the base intelligence of um, that we should be trying to measure is something that created humans we should be measuring God or what <laughs> the, sor the source of the universe as opposed to like there's there could be a deeper intelligence. Sure. There's I mean, always yeah, deeper intelligence, you, I guess. You, you can argue that, but that does not take anything away from the fact that humans are intelligent. And you can right. tell that because they are capable of adaptation and, and generality. Um, and you see that in particular in the fact that uh, humans are capable of handling uh, uh, situations and tasks that are quite different from anything that any of our evolutionary ancestors has ever encountered. So we are capable of generalizing very much out of distribution if you consider our, our evolutionary history as being in, in a way our training data. Of like, course, evolutionary biologists would argue that we're not going too far out of the distribution. We're like mapping the skills we've learned previously desperately trying to like jam them into like these new situations. I mean, there's definitely a little, bit, a little bit of that, but it's pretty clear to me that we're able to, uh, you know, most of the things we do uh, any given day in our modern civilization are things that are very, very different from what, you know, our ancestors a million years ago would have been doing in, in, in a given day. And your environment is very different. So I agree that... Um, Everything we do, we do it with cognitive building blocks that we acquire uh, over the course of evolution, right? And that anchors um, our cognition to a certain context, which is the human condition very much. Uh, but still, our mind is capable of a, a pretty remarkable degree of generality, far beyond anything we can uh, create in artificial systems today. Like the, the degree in which the mind can generalize from its evolutionary history uh, can generalize away from its evolutionary history is much greater than the degree to which a deep learning system today can generalize away from its training data. And like the key point you're making, which I think is quite beautiful, is like we shouldn't measure, if we're talking about measurement, we shouldn't measure the skill. We should measure like the creation of the new skill, the ability to create that new skill. Yes. But there, it's tempting, like, it's weird because the skill is a little bit of a small window into the into the system. So whenever you have a lot of skills, I mean, it's tempting to measure the skills. Yes. I mean, the skill is the uh, only thing you can objectively uh, measure. But yeah, so the, the thing to keep in mind is that when you see skill uh, in the human, um, it 
gives you a strong signal that that human is intelligent because you know they weren't born with that skill typically like you see a very you see a very strong chess player maybe you're, you're a very strong chess player yourself i think you're and you're, you're saying that because i'm russian and now no, you're you're prejudiced you assume all yes, russians I'm, are good I'm, at chess. I'm biased, exactly. I'm biased yeah. so, so. well you're dead. cultural bias <laughs> um so if you see a very strong chess player, you know they weren't born uh, knowing how to play chess. So they had to acquire that skill with their limited resources, with their limited lifetime. And you know they did that because they are generally intelligent. And so they, they may as well have acquired any other skill. You know they have this potential. And on the other hand, if you see a, a computer playing chess, you cannot make the same assumptions because you cannot you know, just assume the computer is generally intelligent. The computer may be born uh, knowing how to play chess in the sense that it may have been programmed by a human that uh, has understood chess for the computer and, and that has just encoded um, the output of that understanding in a static program. And that program uh, is not intelligent. So let, let's zoom out just for a second and say like, what is the goal of the On the Measure of Intelligence paper? Like, what do you hope to achieve with it? So the goal of the paper is to clear up some long-standing misunderstandings about the way we've been uh, conceptualizing intelligence in the AI community and uh, in the way we've been evaluating progress in AI. Um, there's been a lot of progress recently in machine learning and people are, are you know, extrapolating from that progress that we are about to solve general intelligence. And... If you want to be able to evaluate these statements, you need to precisely define what you're talking about when you're talking about general intelligence. And you need um, a formal way, a reliable way to measure how much uh, intelligence, how much general intelligence a system possesses. And uh, ideally, this measure of intelligence should be uh, actionable. So it should not just describe uh, what intelligence is. It sh should not just be a binary indicator that tells you this system is intelligent or, or it isn't. Um, it should be actionable. It should have uh, explanatory power, right? So you could use it as a feedback signal. It would show you uh, the way towards building more intelligent systems.